everyone, my name is Calvin and I'm the civil engineering tutor. Um, due to unexpected events, I will now do a topic per week online. Um, in case you didn't know, the book I'm using is the FV Civil Practice Problems by Lindbergh. Um, it's the one I'm hovering right now. Um, this week I'm going over chapter 19, Rigid Retaining Walls, from this book. Um, let's start with question 1. A soil has an angle of internal friction of 25 degrees. What is most nearly the ranking active or pressure coefficient? Um, let's start off with words you may not know. So from soil mechanics, you'll learn that the angle of internal friction is the friction angle. Um, it's pretty much the ability of soil to withstand shear stress. There are many ways to calculate it, but the quickest way, but the least accurate way to do it is by grabbing a soil sample and essentially dumping it. Um, what I mean by that is, let's get this drawing. Let's just say we have a soil sample right here. Uh, it could be anything. Let's just say it's gravel, so big chunks, well, slightly big chunks of rock. All right. And then we'll dump it. And when you dump it, it would create a triangle. what looks like 25 degrees <laughs> yeah, let's go with that so when you dump the soil like flat on the surface just it should be come out even and then these are the um, angle of internal friction and the other one should be the same they should both be equal to each other but obviously this is theoretical um, Realistically, when you dump sand or like any soil, it wouldn't be identical, but they should be pretty darn close. From this question, we can tell that we're looking at gravel since um, the angle of internal friction is 25 degrees. So as the angle of internal friction increases, you can tell that it's going to be a different soil. So gravel is like the least fine. fine. So when you increase the degrees, it will become sand, perhaps clay, or even silt um rank rank so pretty much the um the other word is ranking ranking is one of the two theories to calculate earth pressure generally speaking ranking is quicker but it has many assumptions that made makes this theory very situational however whenever you can use it it's best to use it to save time um, applications of this theory can involve numerous iterations depending on the size of the project um so the next word is active, which is extremely important keyword when answering these type of problems. Since they are active and passive earth pressure, to be brief, active earth pressure is a situation where um, one side of the wall would tend to overturn or slide the retaining wall. On the other hand, passive earth pressure is a side that has to hold or stabilize, or stabilize this behavior. So what I mean by this is, let's just have a wall right here. Um, This is our wall. We'll have a surface. Okay. Mm. It may just be quicker if I just try to draw it. All right. This is our soil. Obviously, there's gonna be soil that wants to like overturn it, so you have to draw the forces. This is the active pressure since um. Once the side of the wall wants to overturn or slide the retaining wall, it wants to push it to the left. And how we do, what we need to counteract this is to have soil right here that would counteract it or prevent it from um, overturning. This is just one of the many ways to stabilize the soil. However, this is the cheapest, easiest, and requires no maintenance once you install it. Uh, we don't see this commonly enough since we need this space for whatever uses we may have. Um, as a result, one of the ways to make up for this is to create reinforcement layers. So what I mean by reinforcement layers is, um, let, me, let me make more space.
So we have a wall. Then we have so on the right side again. We have a layer. So we'll all, wants to go to the left. So how we can deal with this is, um, for example, geo wall. We have this nice wall for it to not slide and to have no soil here to to balance it or stabilize it. We instead just um, create reinforcement strips um, through reinforcement layers um, to prevent overturn. Um, so pretty much these strips are created to hold active pressure instead of having soil on the other side to stabilize the slope. So these strips would be long, but they have to reach that critical surface failure. I'm right here. And it has to be, and there's many variables to this. You gotta calculate how many strips, what are spacings, what are their, um, how much weight they can hold, um, how many layers, just those are the main problems that Geo well, has to face every single year, the rules change. Um, but yeah, um, this is just one of the ways. So now that um, the ranking earth pressure coefficient is known as um, Ka, it, but it's more generally known as um, coefficient of lateral earth pressure. Fortunately, um, this question only asks for the formula since the applications are extremely complicated and situational. This question should take you less than 30 seconds if you know the formula already or less than a minute for you to find it off the reference manual to solve it. So off the reference manual, um, you, you have these two formulas. You see from us, Ka. Huh. Let me try to insert text. Okay, I just have to write it. Ka equals tan squared forty five degrees minus the internal friction angle over 2. This is for active and for passive it's Kp not Ka equals tan squared 45 degrees plus internal friction angle divided by 2. So, yep, yeah, you just plug in that angle and you plug it into the active. Um, I should mention that the main difference between these two is that one subtract and one's add. Um, I would like to explain why, but it requires further complications. So, when you plug it in, Tan, tan into your calculator, it should equal zero point four zero six, which is rounded to zero point four one, which is B. Um, so for question two now, hopefully I need any more space. Hmm. Yeah, I can undo all this. Oh, okay, that works. All right, empty blank space. So it has an internal friction angle of 25 degrees. What is most nearly the ranking passive earth pressure coefficient? Um, refer referencing to question one, you realize it actually does take 30 seconds. You go back to the passive formula, you plug it in, and as you can see, the difference is once again, one's subtraction and the other is addition. Um, 
the answer should be 2.46 rounded to 2.5 so C um, I can do the formula again um, it's, it's fine so pretty much it's KP equals tan squared 45 degrees plus 25 degrees over 2. Okay, and now for our last questions for the week. What is, so pretty much it's um, a retaining wall supports a, um, so, Support soil with a vertical height of two meters. The soil has a angle of internal friction of 32 degrees and a specific unit weight of 25 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Most nearly, what is the active soil resultant um, from this question? You should immediately tell that you have to use Rankine theory. To summarize the two theories to calculate earth pressure, the second theory is known as Coulomb theory. The biggest difference between the two is that Coulomb theory takes into account the friction between the soil and the retaining wall. Um, what this means is that, like, I'll, I'll draw it out. We have this wall right here, um, and we have soil, right? We have this force that's caused by the soil. Um, what the theory counts for for Coulomb is the friction that happens here. Um, ranking doesn't account for friction, so when our soil goes through and it hits the wall, there's a friction that's created, and it's and it pretty much um how you, how do you put it? It pretty much makes increases the force, generally speaking, but most of the time it's not as significant, or it can be ignored, or you can use a factor of safety. So, the biggest difference between the two is that Coulomb takes into account the friction between the soil and the retaining wall. And typically speaking, Rankine theory un under predicts the true orientation of the failure surface, while Coulomb theory over predicts the orientation. So, how do I, how did I know how to immediately use Rankine theory? To put it simply, this question did not have a delta. Um, and for me to draw what is delta, I'll briefly give you an example of how to draw it. Mm. So let's just say we have a wall. It, can be, it doesn't have to be straight all the time. This is our wall. This is how you, what usually walls look like. Um, we have soil right here. Uh, let's make the soil a bit taller, actually, because why not? And what? And then you have. Right here, then you have this, create that, and the delta is, is the friction, pretty much the friction, how you account for friction. So this is the resultant force, let's just say, and delta is right here, delta looks like this. This is what you have to account for when you involve Coulomb, and there are many other forces around here, but to keep things simple, we'll just... I'll just tell you delta is this, and when you see delta, you know it's Coulomb immediately. Okay? Um, so pretty much from question one, you learned how to calculate Ka. Um, Ka is, once again, for this, for this, how to apply immediately, tan squared, 45 minus 32 degrees, over 2, and this will equal 0 0.307. Um, if you're asking about this question, this question is pretty much asking you what's the resultant force of this wall. So we'll just keep it with this wall. So the resultant force that, so the resultant force is right here. It's pretty much the one-third rule when you use a triangle, like for fluid mechanics, the resultant would be right here. 
And now we must find the resultant force P, P A. So this would be P A. So this is what visually P A looks like um, from the reference mem re manual or from memory. P A is um, equal to one half times K A times the height squared times the unit weight. So this equals two is one half times zero point three zero seven times two meters squared times twenty five kn meters cubed. This answer will end up equaling to fifteen point four. kilonewtons per meter rounded to 15 so the answer would be B um, this concludes this week's topic of the basics of rigid retaining walls next week we'll either go on a new topic or go into the advanced mechanics of rigid retaining walls um, advanced as in like which problems need many iterations um, these things can take like thousands. Um, for GeoL, for example, it took a, few, a couple thousand iterations, but fortunately it had Excel, so it wasn't as bad, but it was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, have a, have a nice weekend.